In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to give some tips when you want to make it look like the camera is zooming in and out on various parts of a video by using the Crop and Zoom tool in post-production. This is available in recent versions of CyberLink PowerDirector. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and play a little bit of this clip. It's an uninteresting clip with two wind turbines on a hill. So what would happen if I decide I want to zoom in on the left wind turbine, zoom back out full screen, and then zoom in on the right one and zoom out full screen? That's a bit of the exercise we're going to show you in this particular tutorial. So to take the clip I want to zoom in and out on, I first highlight it. Then I click on the Tools button above my timelines and choose the first option, which is Power Tools. Crop and Zoom is one of six power tools in my copy of PowerDirector. So I click on the third item down, which is Crop and Zoom. Now that doesn't activate the tool. There's a button I need to click, which is over here. So I widen my panel and I get into the Crop and Zoom tool by clicking on that button. That shows me my Crop and Zoom screen. I have a major edit area in the center. Then I have a preview screen of what it will look like in the upper right. I have a box where I can control the tilt. We'll show you that in a moment. And then I have an aspect ratio. It will inherit the aspect ratio of your major project, so in most cases you won't have to change that. Below the, pre the major edit screen, I have some controls here for keyframes. If you're unfamiliar with a keyframe, basically a keyframe controls the value of one or more aspects of your project at a particular moment. It starts out with a little red keyframe on the left side, which you uh, cannot delete or alter, because it has to start out with a value. Now the value is full screen, everything's normal. To add another keyframe, you can click anywhere on the timeline, and then you click on the diamond below, which simply says Add Keyframe. Now when I do that, I don't see a change because this keyframe inherited the value of the one to the left of it, which is basically no change. Now sometimes I tend to want to change it by adding another keyframe by dragging my little marker, but when I do it, it sticks to the keyframe. So instead of dragging it like that, this is good to move the keyframe, but to add another one, I have to click someplace else and then click the diamond with a plus sign. Otherwise, I'm simply moving this one. If I move over here, I can repeat that all I want. Now, if I want to duplicate the value of a, of a previous keyframe, I click on the double diamond and I can duplicate the previous keyframe or the next. Now in this case there is no next so it's grayed out. So there I duplicated it. And we'll do one at the very end just for fun and click here. So now I have six keyframes. They all have the same value so none of them have changed the project. This is where it gets fun. What I'd like to do then is have the keyframe start here continue the value to this point and point and then we're going to have it zoom in on the left side. By the way, an easy way to move between keyframes is to click the little button at the bottom which has a big arrow pointing to a keyframe and as I click on this you'll see my uh, timeline marker moves jumps from one to the other. So we'll we'll uh, also I can jump in the other direction on this side unless I'm at the first or last keyframe. So we'll have the keyframe be stable between these two moments and then we'll have it uh, zoom in on my windmill. Wherever you are in your project uh, will be reflected in the hours, minutes, and seconds uh, indicator at the bottom. So if you want to know exactly where you are, this will tell you where that keyframe is. If I slide it over a little bit, we're going to see it change a couple frames at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'll change the value. To do that, all I need to do is I can click on the handles on the bounding box. If I want to zoom in, as it were, I tighten up my picture. It keeps my aspect ratio. 
and then it's kind of boring in the middle. I see on the preview I have mostly blue sky. We're going to take the left mouse button and drag it over and I'll center it on the left wind turbine. And so now I have it moving in here. So we'll click on the box to get back to the first keyframe and we'll hit the play key. And notice in the upper right what it will do, it will zoom in on the left one and then it zooms right back out uh, because this keyframe here, I, I'm going to move uh, left and right again. My third keyframe is a zoom in. My fourth keyframe is full screen. Now a better way to do that is to add another keyframe. I'll click here and I'll do duplicate previous keyframe. When I do that, it will stay at the same value at this uh, keyframe and if I click my little indicator at the other keyframe. So then it will come back to full screen and I think I'm going to move this back a little bit. So let's go ahead and stop this and see what we have here. It should be uh, full screen and then it zooms in, stays zoomed in, and then it goes back out to full screen. We'll click the arrow and if we look in the previous screen, the upper right, zoom in, freeze, come back out. So what I'm going to do now is I know between these keyframes, if we do our little motion here, if I watch what I have on my edit screen, and we're full screen again and centered. And I go to the next one. It's still full screen and centered. We're going to add a keyframe where we zoom in on our right wind turbine. So I click anywhere on the line click on the plus and then we're going to go ahead and at this moment we're going to zoom in and move the frame down a little bit and so that should zoom in there I'm going to click anywhere else on the line for how long I want it to stay zoomed in and then I'll hit the duplicate previous keyframe and it will stay at that value if I bounce between them Here's my bounding box in the center. I go back. Bounding box in the center haven't changed. That tells me I'm frozen there. And then if I move all the way forward to my last one, I'm back to full screen. So let's go ahead and play this and see if it accomplished what we wanted. Look in the upper right. We zoom into the left one. Freeze. Back out. Zoom into the right one. Freeze. And back out. That works pretty good. Now let me show you another variation. We have the control here which gives me a control related to uh, changing the angle of what we have. So right now it's zoomed in on the left one. Well let's change this degree. If I go plus it's clockwise. If I go minus it's counterclockwise. Let's go just 45 for 45 degrees on that one. And then we'll go ahead go back to the beginning. Watch the preview screen in the upper right. Okay, it zooms in and spins. But notice something else that happens. You notice as we moved, as it began to spin, we have a little black here. You have to be careful when you're using these tools because sometimes you'll actually go out of frame. And if you don't judge right and, and watch very carefully what you're doing, you might not get the kind of results you want because this isn't professional to be out of frame. If I wanted to change the value of that keyframe, I just go back to it. I can reset it to zero. I can go, maybe I want to go simply a minus 15 here and watch it'll rotate the other direction. We'll go back to the beginning. We'll play it. And there it zooms back a little bit. It didn't go out of frame there. I don't know when I'd use the, uh, the angle other than zero very much, but it's available if you want to use it. So that's a little bit about some of the basic uses of the crop and zoom when you're applying it to a video clip in PowerDirector.